way into not just the end zone at Utah State, but into Studio B. Micah Simon, senior wide receiver with the wagon wheel. Welcome back, man. What's up, Micah? What's up? How are you guys doing? We're great. How are, how are you? I'm That's great, Saturday. too. I'm great. How fun was that, by the way? You, to beat Utah State, snap the streak, get the wagon wheel back. What was that like? Super fun. You know, something we've been, you know, working on this season just to continue to improve uh, each and every week. And, you know, we felt really good about the game plan coming off a of bye week and having two weeks to prepare for, for them. And it all, it all, you know, showed out there on the field and we were able to get that win. I embedded myself on the sideline close to the chicken broth and the hot chocolate for good reason. Uh, and I heard you uh, not just having a good time with your teammate, but I heard you yelling at Ciosi Marina too. Hey, Ciosi, what's good, man? He's lining up. Like, what kind of relationship do you have with him and with some of those guys on the Utah State sideline? Yeah, we have a great relationship. You know, him, obviously, Riley Burt. Um, and, uh, you know, whenever Ciosi was, was, you know, thinking about transferring from Utah. And, you know, we had some talks with him maybe coming here or, you know, going to Utah State. So it's great to just be able to joke around with those guys. And obviously it's a it's a game and we're we're opponents and stuff. We're also friends at the end of the day. So it was great to see him and Riley uh, after the game. Oh, you want to beat your brothers? No doubt. All, all the time. <laughs> Are you? Do you like to chat during the game? Do you chat with the opposing DB or? Sometimes. Yeah, yeah it depends. Yeah, like, ch like, chat is a liberal like, word, right? Like, is it sometimes friendly, sometimes unfriendly? Describe yeah, what that's for like. sure. You for feel sure. it out early with the guy? No, you don't feel it out. You just you just, you just play and and do it, mm. and then you see how they react to it, and then <laughs> and then that sets the scene for the rest of the game. Do, do, are you the one to kind of initiate, or do you wait for the DB to talk? Because I would think that DBs talk more than receivers. Is they that do. a fair assessment? Yeah. DBs yeah. for sure talk before we do, and then <laughs> and then you just figure out you know what to say back. <laughs> I'm like I imagine as as the game evolves too, that could evolve. Yeah. 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 <laughs> a little more chippy or not, right? That's fun. Micah Simon with us on BYU Sports Nation. Are you officially throwing your name uh, in the quarterback competition room uh, after your performance against Utah State? 209 rating? Yes, I am. No okay. doubt. No no doubt about it. I uh, <laughs> actually have a meeting uh, in about 30 minutes with uh, Coach Roderick about this. <laughs> no, but, <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, it was, it was great to finally get that play you know, going and working and uh excited to throw my first college pass okay so they blitz the corner on that play and you get roughed up i mean you got to get rid of it quick yeah we actually never practiced that play into that defense and it was the that was a great call for them um and they almost had us but <laughs> everything was going our way in the game <laughs> who flips it to you lopini yeah Pini. so when he flips it to you are you seeing the corner yeah out of the corner of your eye and you're like uh oh yeah i gotta go fast yeah i had to get it out quick <laughs> And then you get hit in the face. Did you know immediately? Like, hey, did you turn to the ref? Like, I just got. No, nah, I didn't even worry about it. I was just watching Baylor and celebrating. Yeah. And then I saw the flag. And I was like, oh, we'll, we'll take it. <laughs> nice. Did you want Baylor to uh, try and cut it up field and get in the end zone? Give you I, a did. I did. Because he went out of bounds, but he is injured. So, that, you know. Yeah. So, you know, I'll let him slide this time. But, <laughs> you know, if he would have scored, then maybe my rating would be like 250 or, or <laughs> something like that. Could have bumped it up a few points, yeah. Baylor. Come on, man. <laughs> Uh, Micah, what have the coaches figured out to help your team move towards maximizing potential? Because this has clearly been a different team the past two games. Yeah, it's, you know, credit to our coaching staff on doing a lot of uh, self-evaluation, a lot of self-scout on the things that we were doing the first half of the season and seeing, you know, what worked well and what didn't work so well. And, you know, after having a lot of conversations with them, they just put us in the best positions possible to to, to make plays and to to put, you know, playmakers in the best positions possible to, you know, to make plays. And that's offensively and defensively. And, you know, that's that's all that's all them. You know, our coaches are are great and they're always looking for ways to to put us in the best positions possible. Let's talk about your touchdown. Uh, walk us through that play, getting into the end zone. Yeah, we actually, I mean, we've had those little screens in kind of all year, but you have to wait for the right defense to, to run them on, and we felt like we had a great uh, game plan this week uh, against Utah State and got two great blocks from Dax and Gunner and then was just able to use my speed and, and get in the end zone. You got past three dudes, by the way. Just want to point that out. Not one, not two, but three. And then the dive into the end zone. Did you know immediately you got it? It looks like you did. Did you yeah, know 100% you scored? I, yeah, I knew I scored. You hit the pylon. Yeah, when they were reviewing it and Coach Grimes had called the offense up and was like, we have to have a play ready. 
And I told him, I was like, no, I scored. I was like, it's okay, I scored. You're like, he, listen, I'm the quarterback, I'm the receiver. He just kind of smiled at me, and he still gave us a play. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> What's it like to have Coach Grimes on the sideline over the last two games, and how has that impacted the, the atmosphere and just the identity of the team? It's been great. You know, he's... He's obviously, you know, a great offensive coordinator, great leader for, for our offense. And to have him on the sideline, to feel his presence, to, to feel his leadership has been awesome. You know, he, uh, when things go well, he brings us up, you know, tells us a good job, but to not be complacent. You know, things don't go so well. Um, you know, it just brings us back up and tells us to keep, keep fighting, keep playing. And I, I think it's great to have him on the sideline to, to be able to help us out like that. Another great play you were involved in. Wide receivers don't get a lot of credit for good blocks. You were one of the blockers with Talon Shumway on the uh, brotherly connection touchdown, right, from Baylor to Gunner. So walk us through that play as well. Yeah, just a play we've kind of seen a lot of NFL teams run. We've seen uh, the Saints run it with Taysom. And uh, it's basically just a... Uh, Kind of just like a run play, really, just getting the ball behind a quick pass, get the ball behind a couple blockers, and uh, just get it in the end zone really, really quick. So BYU puts up 42 points against Utah State. The defense forces five turnovers. So many players had great individual performances. In your opinion, who is the MVP of Saturday night? The MVP, wow. Uh, that's a really tough question. Can I give two? Can yeah, I, can I sure. go offense and defense? You bet. You yeah. bet. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So, um, defense, I'm going to go with uh, Nice Amahe. I think he gets with over the with the sack. Oh, I yeah. think he gets overlooked a little bit sometimes, but he, he wreaks havoc back there, and he, he works his tail off every day. And uh, to him, he was so disruptive in the, in the backfield all game. And, you know, double teams, it didn't matter. He was, he was still back there. And uh, I think that was something great to see from our defense that even though – we would sometimes only rush three. They were still getting sacks and still getting pressure on the, on the quarterback, and it created those turnovers we had. Um, so props to those guys. And then offensively, um, I think I'll have to give it to, to Peeney. Okay, a little so I have to give it to Katoa. Just you, you sound you sound like you're disappointed that you have to do this. This is this is why. As receivers, we we looked at the stat sheet after the game, and he was the leading receiver, <laughs> but he's a running back. So we were just a little a little hurt, a little sad. But <laughs> but uh, no, nah, <laughs> Penny Penny's a really explosive weapon for us, and you can get the ball to him so many different ways, and he'll uh, he'll make a lot of things happen. So uh, proud proud of him. When you see on second and third and long that these screen calls are coming in, can you sense that it's going to work or not before the play, or do you have to see how the defensive line reacts? Because the screen game was awesome Saturday. Yeah, I think uh, our, our coaches knew the plan that they had uh, Utah State was going to have coming in, you know, on the second and long, third and long situations. And we knew they would bring a little bit more pressure and try to get back in the backfield quickly. And we've, we've repped these screens so many times and getting the exact look for, uh, for them. Um, to to be good on and uh and yeah i think as a receiver you know it's our job just to try to sell sell four verts and get down the field and then and then block down the field and uh it was good to hear the cheers and then see him uh get down the field i want to talk about both of the quarterbacks because jaron hall had an incredible first half through for what 221 rushed for 54 he was he was paced for like a 400 100 um, at what point do you do you realize, oh, Jaron's not going to be able to go and Baylor's going to come in at, at the start of the third quarter? Yeah, I think it was just at the end of that second um, second quarter when we uh, had the ball with just 30 seconds left and we were just going, um, you know, victory formation to take a knee. And uh, I was the safety, and then I saw Baylor under the center. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and then, uh -oh. But then I, I still was like, oh, maybe it's just, I don't know, just something real quick. Jaron's getting checked out or whatever. And Couldn't then, find his helmet or something. Yeah, you know, something small. Yeah. But then, yeah, halftime, they, they told us, yeah, he was, you know, he was out for, for the rest of the game. And, uh, you know, that was that was tough to hear just because he'd been playing so well and uh, worked so hard to get back and get back healthy and everything. So uh, it was tough to see that. But then, but then yeah, Baylor came in and, and did what, exactly what he kind of did against Boise State and just called Coombe. Calm, cool, and collected, and just yeah. balled out. Well, yeah. What is it about him that is so calm? I mean, like, is he always like that? Because th this guy is quarterback BYU to two notable wins the last two games. Yeah, he's he's super uh, calm, and I think it's just 
stack of Romney family. You know, they're him and, like that yeah, have him, and, him, and, have <laughs> him and Gunner are kind of super, super quiet and just go with the flow type of guys. Um, but yeah, when their numbers call it, they're both making plays and they're both doing what they're supposed to do. Mom's getting them blankets. You know, it's all good. Right? <laughs> the game. Here, sweetie, yeah. it's crazy. <laughs> Gunner got one, but Baylor didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Only one blanket, bro. Guess we see who the favorite is. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, let's finish up with this. How's the posse holding up? And by posse, I mean the Warner Brothers, Fred and Troy, Jake Toulson and you. Because you guys have kind of been through so much together and started your BYU careers essentially together. How's the posse, man? The posse is great. We're full-fledged right now. You know, basketball season starting up. Jake's about to do what Jake does on the court. I'm super excited to, to see that. You know, at the at our team movie Friday night, I had my phone and was watching BYU TV, mm -hmm. watching the game. Nice, use that app, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, he's you know he's doing great. I'm glad that he's back. You know, it's 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 a great feeling to see him just walking around campus and seeing him around the the SAB and things like that. And then yeah, Troy Troy's doing great. Um, look out for Troy pretty soon. Hopefully, yeah, nice see him getting healthy. Yeah, and he could play four games and still play next year. Yeah, so. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing Troy out there on the defense pretty soon. And then, yeah, my man Fred is, is balling out. He's doing all right. Yeah. <laughs> He's doing okay. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, only only undefeated team now uh -huh, in the go. NFL. Let's my Seahawks next week. Yep, let's go Niners. Go. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but, hey, uh, hey, yeah, it's, well. it's it's great to have that relationship with those guys. And uh, I'm, I'm glad that we're all, we're all best friends. Yeah, that's Fantastic awesome. stuff. That's Mike, great. it's great to talk to you. Congratulations again on your quarterbacking. And on your receiving. Good, good luck winning the job this week. Appreciate that. I'm going to go get my green jersey today. <laughs>